mitochondrial awakening. I'm going to say that again. I don't think y'all really get that. Ascension is mitochondrial awakening. Only women can turn it on in the men, but the men have to do their self-work before a woman going to even touch them. Some women can do it accidentally. They normally victims of domestic violence because that man nine vote ass can't handle that 250,000 vote. A woman that he, she just ran through his ass. So I told y'all when they start turning off this ego, motherfuckers gonna be walking down the street and drop dead. Boop, he, he done. You know, and they say, well, what's the twitching? That's called a post-mortem nerve response. It comes from the abrupt exiting of, a, of the ego matrix from the physical form. So the body is trying to find the ego, it can't find it. The nervous system is searching for the light and the life and it can't find it because the ego is turned off now. All of their lesser magic has ran into this African conjure and got kicked the fuck out. Because the baddest motherfuckers on this planet has the motherfucking portal of life and will shut this bitch down as they did. As you see in the Pacific Ocean, they had a large colony of penis fish that washed ashore. They're not penis fish. Those are aliens from another planet. Those are pods. And they live in that form for a couple hundred years before they can spawn. When it's time for them to spawn, you have massive gatherings of what appear to be voluptuous females on the beach. Nobody ain't pay that shit, no attention. It went over everybody's head. Look at the beach body. Examine that shit. Look at the beach body. What these motherfucking queens of the damn do. They lure the men with the physiques to load the parasites through their eyes swimming in the ocean. If she goes swimming, she allowed her penis fish to copulate with her and spew its parasites into her or his vagina like a seahorse does in the stomach. Then it gestates, but it doesn't get very big initially. It does most of the growing inside of the host. Every couple of uh, years, you can tell by the lifespan of a pope how long they generally last before they have to change hosts. They normally take on an older male because he have more knowledge for them to absorb. They absorb knowledge from the host every time they jump body to body they just absorb the whole mind of of that host his whole mind is assimilated into their knowledge base then when they become in close proximity to each other it telepathically it automatically changes information they automatically relay information telepathically but they have to be in a close proximity to each other unlike the earth queens an earth queen could be on the north pole and another one could be on the south pole and they can have a telepathic communication like they sitting right there in front of each other talking sometimes these women think they just having a rogue thought or they just thinking something which is not the case you actually having a conversation with another woman on another side of the planet telepathy is crazy because it will automatically translate it into the language you understand It'll automatically translate what's being said into the language that you already understand. So if you speak English and you're a woman and you need to communicate with a woman that speak Portuguese, French, Italian, Chinese, Mandarin, whatever the fuck other language, if you don't use the vocal tones, the mind will automatically translate for you. I don't speak that language. I have to translate it. So when you go looking at the African queens, they say Ann Zinga spoke about seven languages and she heard five more. What do they mean when they say she heard five more? That means that she can telepathically communicate and assimilate five languages that she cannot verbally speak. She cannot verbally speak those tongues, but when she hear them, it automatically translates in the back of her mind what's being said, and then she can say it in one of the languages that she verbally speaks. That language 
It's not tied to her speech and hearing connector. You got to make a bridge. So what do we do when we want to learn multiple foreign languages if we don't study one language? We don't study the language we even read. We study the concept of linguistics. It's a concept. How do humans communicate? This also gives you tools to break down um, nonverbal communication. Then you learn how to talk to animals. Some motherfuckers say, this nigga think he Dr. Doolittle. I was talking to them motherfuckers all night. You don't understand the totem system. It won't make no sense. Before there was a religion, we were we had totems the totem is the family clan's animal guide or animal guardian from the spirit realm that lends certain faculty to the human being and it does stuff like for instance if i was to use the totem animal my gorilla right if there's a gorilla anywhere on this planet and i go into meditation and um, I do certain stuff. I'm not going to tell you all how I communicate with the gorillas, but they know how to communicate with me. But I'm just telling you that once you understand what your totem animal is, you meditate, y'all communicate telepathically. The gorilla gives you a different concept of God within the self. Now, they asked Coco the gorilla in sign language, what does God mean to a gorilla? And Coco told the human that asked that question that God means light. And that the light shines in in the head and lights up the beam and gives them light. A fucking gorilla telling a human this shit. These dumbass humans ain't figured it out yet. A gorilla telling you without never having religious context type conversations with the handler because when the question was asked she said i never thought to ask the gorilla about god we don't that's not even part of the research the animals concept of god so then if the animals say the god ain't what the humans think and the human spiritually backwards what the fuck is they talking about you upside down and turned around mentally you upside down and turned around mentally now, how do you know this? You have to look at how the optic nerve flips the image for you to see. So the goal is to stop looking externally to look out into the world, but to look internally and use the back of your mind or space, what they call your um, medulla, as the mirror. You got mirror cells in the front of your head. So you roll your eyes up. You look in these mirrors. And once your sacred secretion hit the four chambers, the refraction of light automatically lines everything up for you to see. And that refraction of light that's lining everything up for you to see is actually flipping the image back right side up, turned around, so you know how I get down. You can see shit then. Once you see it, then you can hear. So you go from clairvoyant to clairaudient. Once you, those two faculties are tuned, then you are clairsentient. That means you can see shit, sense shit all over the world. That shit is not for the faint at heart. It's a good thing that those that's of the platinum group metals are human have a higher spiritual capacity because if we was weak in heart our minds would be severely troubled to the point of they would break you would break everybody that they classify insane is not insane now i used to ask the question to guys when i was locked up and the question was this if the whole world was insane and you were saying how in the fuck would you know that you were saying and they wasn't. If it's 8.4 billion people was insane and one motherfucker was sane. He's the lunatic. Why? Because he is the only motherfucker that ain't like the rest. He Waldo. Fine Waldo, motherfucker. Where you at? So 
we not never really sinking in to what is and what is not taking place, we are going along to get along with the enemy. The same motherfucker got his foot on our neck. We are going along to get along. So now one of the definitions is it is a crown around a part of the body resembling or likened to a crown. You remember the halo they have over all of the prophet's head. It looked like a circle around the top of the head. If you are not watching what's taking place in the atmosphere, you will never see that around the solar and the lunar is two coronas. It's harder to see the one on the sun in the daytime than it is to see the one around the moon at night. But those are the two eyes. That's the Ujet um, or Wajet and Uraeus. That is your owl vision at night and your hawk vision of the day. The three-phase God, the ascending God, the apex is the known God at his highest point, the I-10. And then you have your descending God or your God set, Lord set, set. Now, the good example to explain to a child how to understand that is you watch the sunrise in the morning and you say, this is Kepra. This is Ra Kepra Amun. This is the unknown God breaking the horizon as Ra or as the sun. And then as it gets to the apex at noon, you tell, you tell the child, this is called Ra Aten because it's fully visible anywhere you at at noon. Wherever it's noon at, it's fully visible. The God is known then or the sun is known, but it's not talking about actually the physical solar disk in the sky. This is just a representation of an idea in order for a child to understand his growth phases. And as he get older and begin to recede into the state that they call death, this is called the set of the sun. That's why they said that set slew his brother. The Osir or Osirion is the manifestation of the three rays of light at a central point, which is represented by a pyramid. When the three rays of light come to that central point, it creates a triangle on top of the pyramid or a capstone. You need three. That's why you see two queens erecting the king or crowning the king. It takes two queens to crown the king for a reason because you need the three point conversion off the three, six, nine flip, which is expressions of the nine ether flipping of the three, six, nine on the carbon element to show you who the beast is. The beast is the untempered and untamed mind of a God. He is fucking wild and a motherfucker. You know, he out in the streets boxing and busting cats. That's what they do. That means you can't control that shit with the ego. That means that you have to get control of yourself on a whole nother level. This is the part where 99% of the motherfuckers run because they're scared to do the work because it's hard. So it got to get done whether you want it to or not. The work is hard. I did it. I know it's hard. But if I can do it, I was the omega, the last. I will not be last anymore because I did my fucking work because I didn't like the last place position. I seen too many assholes in front of me. The last place position, you only get to see all the assholes in front of you. You don't get to see no motherfucking true light. So as you do your work and you bump through all of these assholes and this knock around game off this four corner shuffle in the two ball cane, you go, what the fuck is this I'm seeing? If you did the work, your knowledge then attracts interest. You become a, a beacon of light. Motherfucker start to what the fuck is that nigga doing over there? Who is that motherfucker? He look a little different. He don't walk like everybody else. The swag totally different. What's different about this motherfucker? Let me go. But a master looking at you. That's that nigga right there. I've been waiting on this motherfucker a long time so we can get out of this condition. Somebody need to the fuck up.
but no man can wake another man on this level. It has to be a woman to awaken a man. And the woman has to be a master. This whole life is a love story. Creation is a love story. If you read how it is told in ancient Kemet, it's a love story from the word go. The marrying of opposites to bring about a synthesis of the two is a love story. People don't want to acknowledge you to admit it, but it's all boiled down to a love story. And, it, and to make it even simpler, a love story is a mitochondrial story. And the mitochondrial story is a woman's story. So if the man don't balance his divine feminine with his divine masculine, he can't take part in the love story yet. Unrequited love becomes his motherfucking uh, punishment, not really to punish him, but to awaken him. Everything that we look at as an obstacle is a tool for our motherfucking come up. All the shit that we went through that was hard, it was supposed to be hard so you can learn a hard lesson. Ain't nobody learned more hard lessons than me. So like Jim Croce, you say, I had my share of broken dreams. Uh, what did I say? Um, ran into, uh, man. Broken dreams. And more than a couple of fall, and in chasing what I thought were moonbeams, I had run into a couple of walls. But in looking back at the places I've been, wait a minute, how the fuck you say that shit? I'm gonna play that shit before, so I can't play it because they gonna then they're gonna fuck the video up, so y'all ain't gonna get no information. But basically, he's saying that I learned the hard way every fucking time. So if y'all want to know, it's a Jim Croce song, Hard Way Every Time. I didn't did it. Everything I did, I learned the hard way. Why? The hardest lessons are the most memorable. The most memorable lessons teaches you the most. So the more hard lessons you assimilate, the more you learn, the further you can go with it. So everything that was meant for my setback was my setup for the comeback. I'm a fucking rubber band in this bitch. Knock me down, I'm going to bounce back up. You know, I take the fall, but I ain't the fall guy. You know, you can push me down, but I don't stay down. You can kick me down, I'm still not going to stay down. I'm going to come back every fucking time. And every time I come back, I'm going to come back smarter than I was the last time, wiser than I was the last time, stronger than I was the last time, and more fucking ferocious than I was the last time. So then they set up a condition. And the condition is designed to live so that the soul can shine through the artificial and shatter that artificial man matrix called the ego. So these ego motherfuckers think they woke. You ego woke, motherfucker. You ain't woke woke. You ego woke. You not woke woke. Your ego is telling you you woke so you can masturbate to your black nationalist doctrine, your white supremacist doctrine, your democratic philosophy and Republican philosophy, got all you dumb motherfuckers fighting each other for the same piece of pie. It's the dumbest shit in the world. But they took the rest of the pie, they ain't even eating it. They slid that motherfucker in the vault and put a lock on it for whenever you motherfuckers stop fighting over that little one piece of pie that they gave you to keep you divided so that they can keep you conquered. The rest of the pie wait. See, they only allowed to eat off that same one piece of pie that you eating off of. So who you think gonna get the most of that one little slice of pie? They is, because they controlling that one slice. And as long as they got y'all fighting over it, them motherfuckers sitting there, look at them fools fighting over my pie. So Farrakhan say that the black people was like Lazarus. Laying at the rich man table begging for crumbs, steal, prodigal son who squandered his resources in riotous living. He said, you are that people in the final cause speech. Y'all ain't even know. Look, y'all so busy trying to be a good fucking Christian. Don't even realize the devil is a Christian problem. Ain't got nothing to do with you. You 
as long as you're a Christian, it's your problem. But when you ain't a Christian no more, the devil ain't your problem no more. Iblis is only a fucking Islamic problem. The Dijal, that's an Islamic issue. That ain't got nothing to do with the Western world. They deal with that shit over there by the Kaaba and their universities and motherfucking um, Saudi Arabia. That ain't our shit. That's not our problem to contend with. Let them dance with their devils. Let them have that shit. They God is they devil. It's the same motherfucker. Isaiah 45, 7. I am the Lord thy God. I create good and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. It's a fucking Christian problem. Don't got nothing to do with us. We was before all that shit. We gonna be here when that shit gone. That's our shit. We always been kind hearted to each other, but now they got us not even wanting to see each other come up because we worried about their God and their devil. That's their issue. That's not your issue. You don't have to deal with no devils and no gods. You deal with the righteousness within yourself and that'll liberate you. You liberate your mind. You liberate your soul because the artificial mind control set in by the ego is what's keeping you oppressed. 